Good afternoon, everyone. This is Whitney from the Office of Citizen Engagement, and today we are continuing our Roanoke Earth Month campaign by featuring the Western Virginia Water Authority. Joining us from the Western Virginia Water Authority today is Sarah Baumgartner. Thank you so much for being with us, Sarah. Thanks for having me. And uh, today we are live from the Crystal Spring Treatment Center, which, as you can see behind us, that is Carillion uh, Roanoke Memorial. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the spring and, and what happens here? Sure. The Western Virginia Water Authority treats the drinking water for the citizens in the city of Roanoke, Roanoke County, Franklin County, and Bonnetot County. And Crystal Spring is one of our sources of water. We treat about 19 million gallons of water a day, and about 4 million gallons a day comes from the spring. And Crystal Spring is a wonderful underground source of water that's always been used as a drinking water source, and yet we do not know the source of Crystal Spring. It flows from the base of Mill Mountain, and we capture that water, and we are going to filter it, and clean it, and disinfect it, and send it to our customers to use in their homes and businesses. And so it pops out somewhere just right behind you. You showed me earlier, somewhere right. over there yeah, at, at the, the base, base of Mill Mountain. At the base of Mill Mountain is the spring box, and this is where the water has always flown for people to access, but we just don't know what the source of that water is. We know Native Americans use the water. We even know George Washington came here and drank water before that's, he was even president. That's a great um, fact. <laughs> it's been used for mills, the Evans Mill, and then later the McClanahan Mill, um, but all along as drinking water for the citizens of the city of Roanoke. And so let's take a walk Yeah, let's take a look here. at some of the water um, from the source. We pump the water into the buildings. We're going to go look at the, the wet well and the raw water pumps. Let's come up here and take a look. If you look down into the wet well, you'll see the water coming out of the spring. At this point, there's been no treatment done to it. Any overflow that we're not going to use for drinking water will go into a pipe, and that water will divert to the Roanoke River. And then the green pumps that are in the water will pump the water into the treatment plant where we can filter it. And that gets the water run through the filter media um, very effectively. So you want to take a look at the filter building? Yeah, let's let's take a tour. And so you said four million About gallons. About four million gallons of water a day. Are being produced from a mysterious spot that right. we, we don't know where it is. We don't know is. where it comes from, but we are very lucky to have this source of water. We've always use this source of water and it's a very clear very dependable source it doesn't seem to be impacted by drought by excessive rain most water sources if you get a lot of rain you would expect the water to get a little dirtier more sediment in it that's not the case here at crystal spring hmm very interesting so, so come on in we'll go toward okay. the filter plant so this building was constructed in 2002 and its sole purpose is to filter the water at Crystal Spring. All right. And how long does the treatment process actually take? From the time the water comes out of the spring box till the time it goes out to the holding tank, it's a matter of minutes. We're talking two, three minutes. Wow, and so that's how you're able to produce, you know, so many millions of gallons of water in just one, you know, right. every single day. That's yeah, it's a very efficient treatment process. Very cool. And so what are we looking at here? So this is an ultra filtration water treatment facility. We have five different treatment units. Each one of these treats one million gallons of water a day. So if you are a drop of water, you're gonna come into the building from those pumps, through the green pipe, and then up through the filters that you see in the gray canisters in the center of each one of these units. Mm -hmm. From there, the filtered water will lead through the blue pipe overhead. At the end of the process, we're gonna disinfect the water with chlorine. Chlorine is a required additive for drinking water. We have about one part per million of chlorine in the water, and that's enough to kill any type of bacteria that may be in the water. Um, that we don't want our consumers to have. We also add fluoride to the drinking water, and that amount is about 0.7 parts per million. And fluoride helps your teeth, so you don't get as many cavities. Great. So 
These filters here, doesn't look like much when you see just all these gray tubes, but if you take a peek inside, it really is quite interesting. Inside the gray canister is this net that holds all of the filter media in place. Those strands, which are, think of a drinking straw. They're basically just hollow straws. And there's 8,000 to 9,000 packed inside each one of these tubes. The water is gonna come in, it's gonna be forced through the white polypropylene strand media and come out the hole in the end. Now, if you look at one of these strands, I'm gonna pull one of the ones we have sitting here. And if you look closely at the end of the strand, there's a little tiny black dot. You have to have good eyes yeah, to do I don't this. Yeah, the camera's gonna pick this up. But I don't see it well either, but it is there. And the water is going to go through the polypropylene material. The water is going to come out the end through that hole in the straw. And anything larger than 0.01 microns is going to be trapped in this filter media. So any type of sediment, any type of parasitic organism that may be in the water would be trapped here and it's not going to end up in your drinking water. Now. These do get clogged up sometimes and they can even get damaged. Um, if you had a split occur in one of these strands, you wouldn't want to use that strand anymore because larger particles could get in and that would defeat the purpose. So what our water operators have to do is take that one damaged strand out of commission, but they still want to use all the other ones. So they do this thing called penning. They will take the large strand, the large tube, they will blow compressed air into it, cover the surface, the top of it, with a little bit of water, and look for air bubbles to form. And if a bubble forms, that means the air is getting into a tube through a larger opening, such as a crack, and you need a pen, take one of these little needles, stick it into the opening, when the bubble stops, you know that you have sealed up that one particular strand, and then you can snap this off, sealing up that one strand, leaving all the other ones still in commission. And we rotate all of our filter tubes through this process every year, looking for any defects to make sure that we have the proper filtration that we need. That's great. You know, you have a lot of um, I guess you're constantly checking all of the equipment and checking the water right. quality. And so over here, so, you actually have a laboratory? Yeah, come on into our lab. This is our control room. So here is where the, the operators are going to work for our control rooms. And each of our water treatment facilities has its own control room. Each water treatment facility treats water from a particular source. So this is treating water from Crystal Spring, and the operators are going to be testing and monitoring just the Crystal Spring treatment here at this lab. We can do that several different ways. Of course, one is through institutional knowledge and through training. Our water operators go through a lot of training. It takes six years from the time you enter the business straight out of community school college or even straight out of high school or soon to be straight out of our high school apprenticeship program till the time that you can become a class one water operator and that is the highest rating by the Commonwealth of Virginia but even then those operators still have to continue getting on the job training and recertification so that we have the highest trained people treating your water they also use lab work um, each one of our water treatment facilities has a spot lab here where you can check at the wet lab. You can grab a sample, and one of the things that people always notice in our labs is we have water running from the faucet. If you saw that at your house, you would have a leak and you would need to fix it. But in a lab, you want the water to be running because you want to be grabbing a true sample of the water and not any stirred up sediments from when you just turned on a pipe. You grab a sample and we do lots of different tests. We test for fluoride level, we test for chlorine level, we test the pH, the temperature, the turbidity, which is clarity of the water. 
That information all gets recorded. Our, all of our data re is reported to the Virginia Department of Health and the EPA. And we have a lab at our Spring Hollow facility that will collect additional samples. And in that state certified lab, they will run a wide variety of um, tests on the raw water, which is the untreated, the finished water, which is what you get at your house. We test metals, we test for minerals, um, bacteria. We're, we're testing all those components for our customers. Um, information is also monitored by computer. And we have SCADA equipment where all of our plants are hooked up to this um, online network where we're monitoring the flow of water through the plant. We can see what the chemical feed is, how much chlorine, how much fluoride has been used, what the pH of the water is, what the treatment levels are. We can monitor the plant and we can monitor the distribution system. Because once that water leaves here, it's gonna travel through about 1,500 miles of pipe from all of our different plants to get to our customers so that you have the water for drinking and bathing and cooking and cleaning and all the different things that you do with your water. Great, well thank you so much for such a comprehensive tour of the facilities. Is there anything else that you wanted to show us or add? Well, we encourage people to learn more about the water. It really is quite fascinating. There's a lot more that goes on behind the faucet from the time you just turn on your water. Um, and we love to show what we do and help people understand that there is so much education that goes into this. And we encourage people to be curious. Maybe you want to be curious and get into the business too. And we're always looking to talk to people about becoming water treatment operators or people who work in the distribution field. It's an exciting, environmentally friendly, um, very secure business to be in. Great. Well, thank you so much. And um, you know, if you have any questions, people watching at home, uh, feel free to comment below and we will respond to your questions and put a link to the Western Virginia Water Authority site too so that you can get some more information. Thank you so much, Sarah, for Thank being you. with us today. I really appreciate it. And um, for our viewers, stay tuned for more Roanoke Earth Month posts. We're going to be doing this for the whole month of April, just highlighting different organizations like the Western Virginia Water Authority that work so hard to help keep our environment clean.